Karibu Zanzibar, we explored this paradise island to the fullest extent. Join us in this video as we give an overview of each of the places we visit, the price of accommodation, food, transport and what to do. The people are welcoming, it's absolute bliss over here. Enjoy the journey. We've done in-depth videos of each part of the island we visited from east to south to north to the cultural hub of Zanzibar being Stone Town. Check them out if you want more information. So this is how we get in around the island of Zanzibar and exploring it to the fullest extent. From east to south to north to Stone Town this was the vehicle of choice. It's a rental vehicle from Zanzibar Rentals and Expeditions. I'll leave a link in the description below. It costs 26 US dollars per day plus an additional once off 10 US dollars for the local driving permit. National driving licenses are accepted. We highly recommend renting a vehicle during your stay on the island. That's purely for cost reasons. This rental is $26 a day as opposed to $40 per transfer. Because our tour involved exploring the length and breadth of the island, this rental allowed us to be more flexible, plan our itinerary around our own schedules, and have no time constraints if we find ourselves enjoying a specific part of the island. So it's definitely recommended. Rentals do vary in price depending on which company you use uh, for the rental. The company we used was more informal in the sense that no deposit or credit card details were required, uh, which we believed would be safer under the circumstances. And we're very happy with the rental, very professional, all on time, and couldn't have asked for better service. Pajay on the eastern side of the island is one of the more vibey areas of the island. If you're into beach parties, water sports and a variety of activities, check out this side of the island. Accommodation just off the beach is around 60 US dollars per night. Food on the beach can be expensive, you're looking at about 11 to 12 dollars per meal excluding drinks. But if you walk a further in, you can pay about 8 to 9 dollars for a meal. Being the part of the island with more wind, kite surfing is very popular. You can also rent a bicycle at $8 per person for an entire 24 hour period. And this was really cool because during low tide we were able to ride from Pajay to Jambiani. And that was a really interesting experience in stopping along the way, walking out, looking at the seaweed farms. And that's a relatively inexpensive activity to do whilst in Pajay. On the east of the island, if you're looking for activities away from the ocean, think about going to the Kuza Caves. It's $10 per person and you get to have a very special spiritual experience.
Buddhism Kazi on the south of the island is where you go if you're looking for serenity, peace, natural untouched beauty. It's a fishing village, very remote, and there's access to other beautiful beaches such as Mtende. Being a more remote part of the island, there aren't many accommodation places to stay. We found an absolute gem, La La Land Lodge. It was at the top end of our budget. You're looking at between $70 and $80 per night, depending on the room and if you'd like a sea view. Food is relatively less expensive than other parts of the island. We had lunch right on the beach at one of the local restaurants, Sunset Restaurant, and there you were looking at between eight and nine dollars per person for freshly cooked fish. We didn't do much on this part of the island because of its serenity and peace, but as with other parts of the island, there are activities. You can do Safari Blue as it's called here in Zanzibar. It's known for its dolphins on the south of the island and it's a lot cheaper to access these tours. So that's something to keep in mind if you find yourself in the quaint village of Kizamkazi. and history visit the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Stone Town. It's best to explore Stone Town on foot. We did our own walking tour using the GPS and we got to experience every single little street and corner of Stone Town. We did our own little street food tour and meals were between two and three dollars for real authentic Zanzibari food. The nice thing about Stone Town is that a lot of the attractions are free of charge to explore and enter and experience. We got to experience the Darjani market and the Puradani food market at night and yes our tummies were very happy with us after that.
Nungui on the northern part of the island appears to be the tourism hub of Zanzibar. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of water activities, but if you're looking for a swim beach and to really experience the crystal clear blue turquoise waters, this is where you need to be. You can either swim at Nungui or you can go three kilometers up to Kendwa, experience beautiful sunsets at both. We preferred Nungui because you got more of the essence of Zanzibar at Nungui as opposed to the more resort feeling of Kendwa. Accommodation varies in Nungui from top end resorts to beach bungalows. At the beach or a bit further in, you're looking at between $50 to $70 at the lower end. But remember, those prices might be inclusive of the $9 tax per day per person. So it's good to inquire about that before booking. Besides just really soaking up these blue waters, there are many activities to do here. We've seen sunset cruises, we've seen jet skis, and we've seen an array of snorkeling and diving activities that are available. Zanzibar is without a doubt a place best explored when you experience the local way of life, appreciate the people and really look at Hakuna Matata philosophy. The people are welcoming, the culture is rich and yes, it is an absolute paradise.